In this demonstration, you'll learn how to use Ensite's powerful parts creation mechanism. Let's first look at a simple creation of a clip plane. Select the parent for which we want to create the clip. You can right click here and select the clip in the XYZ direction. Let's go in and look at the created part. You can also get a full list by using the following icon to get a full, more comprehensive list for creating different types of clips. With the model part selected, the parent part is denoted by both a bold format and a letter P for parent to signify who the parent of that selected part is, more specifically our clip plane. Since this is a created part, you can select it by depressing your left mouse button and dragging it left to right to increase or decrease its location. You can also double click on that clip plane to take you to the full editor where you can specify either an exact value of that clip plane or access different tools and controls to create that particular part. Let's say you want to have it at 6. You therefore constrain that clip to be at that exact value. We can similarly create an ISO surface by right clicking the parent and choosing ISO surface. This will prompt us for the variable to create that surface from a single value. In this case, select pressure. This will create a surface off a single value and that value is a mid-range value by default. You can specify an exact value here, for example minus 20, and that will give the ISO surface of that variable a value of 20. You also have the ability of creating ISO volumes in multiple clips. For example, you can turn the visibility of that part off and select the parent, and rather than using the right-click shortcut, you can use the fully featured ISO surface creation option. You can select pressure and the range value. Set it to minus 10 and input 4 for the number of surfaces you created. Each of their deltas will be 5. This will create 4 ISO surfaces starting from a value of minus 10 and incrementing each surface by a value of 5. Select Create with selected parts. You have now created all 4 ISO surfaces in one operation and each of the ISO surfaces has a different value starting at minus 10 and incrementing up. If you want to create more generic clips, you would select the parent and use the clips icon. You will be presented with a large selection of tools that you can use to create clips and create new parts in this particular dialog. Now turning off the ISO surfaces, you can see that you can change the color and attributes of different parts by dragging pressure onto the specific part. That part now becomes colored by the pressure denoted here in the color by column. The parent does matter in the creation. If you were to select the wall part, right-clicked and selected a clip in the X direction, you would get a section cut through it. You can visualize this better by turning off your wall part for a moment. At the same time, color this part a dark color. You can see the part you created. The new clip plane part was the intersection of X with the wall which ended up creating just a line part here, which is different from the clip part you created earlier going through the fluid. Any of these parts created are dynamic. You can left click and left click a second time on this move icon allowing you to drag the clip left or right to increase or decrease it. The same can be accomplished for ISO surfaces. You can left click on the ISO surface and depress the left mouse button and drag it left or right to increase or decrease the value of that ISO surface. You can see that if you're on the other side and do a left click, the movements will be inverted. Another common creation attribute is streamlines. Streamlines are typically created from a part. Let's turn the visibility of that part off. You can take this clip and right click it and select the Z direction. Again, you have now created a child of another child, essentially making this part here a grandchild. Its parent is the clip plane, and the clip plane's parent is the fluid part. If you were to change its parent, moving the clip plane left or right, that clip will go through with you as well due to the fact that it is defined from wherever this part is. Therefore, if you were to move this clip here, you will see that this line clip you created changes because it is defined as the intersection of this clip with that specific Z coordinate that you specified earlier. This can make the creation process useful as it allows you to build upon different parts to create the data extraction or the investigation that you need to have. You can use this line part to create the streamlines from. You are going to read streamlines from part 13, but you'll still want the streamlines to go through the fluid part, therefore its parent will be the fluid part. Use the streamline creation utility to do so. The velocity will be your vector variable. Type will remain a streamline and emit from a part. That part ID will be 13 with 100 emitters. As you are computing through the fluid, streamlines will go through that part. Color those streamlines by velocity by dragging the velocity vector to the particle trace part with 14 as the ID number. This will allow you to have a clearer visualization of the streamlines. 
You can move and adjust the shape of the legend if necessary. You now have streamlines released from that line part that go through the domain. If you were to move the parent, you'll see that those parts all update as well and you end up having a great grandchild in the particle trace part. This part is created and defined as the emit point from the particular line tool which is part 13, and part 13 is defined from the clip plane part denoted by the number 6. Creating parts allows you to dive into your complex domain, both spatially and from a variable point of view to easily extract out information to understand the flow field, the variable field, and understand the results of your simulation. This concludes our demonstration on how to use Ensight's powerful parts creation mechanism.